Let's worship the Mia. Francois, are there any other apologies for the meeting? No, so I'm going to move that we accept the apologies. Yep, I'm happy to. So Kogan, Councillor Davidson, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Those against? Um, any declarations of interest? I've been sent to Microsoft Teams and updated. Select Dino if there's anything to change. And are there any urgent items not on the agenda? Move through. The minutes of the previous meetings, 20th of October, 2021, and the 7th of March, 2022, which was the meeting that was abandoned. Um, someone to move that the minutes of the Community Development Committee meeting held 20th of October, 2021, and the 7th of March, 2022, be confirmed as a true and correct record. I, I, I was, well, I'm happy to move. No, it's just, a, it's basically a, a minute sheet that just says meeting opened and abandoned. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you're seeking, thank you. Mm -hmm. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. And those against? Yes, Carrie, thank you very much. Um, I approve that my digital signature be added to the confirmed Community Development Committee meeting minutes of the 20th of October, 2021 and 7th of March, 2022. The action list is on pages five to six of the agenda. And good evening, Simon. Um, oh, well, welcome, Simon and TC then. All good, sorry. Oh. Uh, so well, happy to, terms, happy just sort of, to hand it to TC. Yeah, in terms of item one, there's two aspects of that. The first being the Hopkins in the Inch group. Obviously, that's been surpassed in terms of the establishment of a Hook Tipper Museum Trust Board, which was before Council last month. Um, and for terms of reference, to come back to Council before we end up proceeding with that. There is potentially store value in terms of the cultural heritage submitting. However, that requires engagement with all those different agencies. In the sense that, as with where we are today, the difficulty that people have with committees that have gotten getting membership for that, whether it's actually voting and creating another subcommittee or committee, which goes to another reporting line, or a better way to liaise with all committees together in terms of having a split phase of view. So there's discussions we've been having, both at industrial heritage, but um, heritage but a few others as well as to how we better approach that going forward rather than establishing another committee for the same mm -hmm. committee. So that's in terms of item one. Um, item two. So that's in front of council as well. So a budget has been allocated and we've planned for both um, uh, promotion of Hokitika, um, following through what uh, Destination Hokitika expressed as um, what they would like to see. So that allocation of budget is in the current annual plan and we'll discuss. Tomorrow, um, there is there is a little bit of feedback through submission of that. Well, people probably didn't know what they mean in the plan, did they? They wouldn't no. know what it was. It just no. said tourism signs or something mm -hmm. generic. Uh, so, in terms of item three, the Victorian Heritage Trust Board is still in the process of inviting them to speak before the Community Development Committee. Um, so, that's a date that's been. Confirmed. Did that um, come up last week? Yeah, so um, they informally have talked to us about um, their aspirations. Uh, don't, they don't expect to be in front of council for quite some time. They've got uh, quite a bit of funding to um, to use, and uh, hopefully they won't need to come to council for the proposal. Hi, James. Welcome. Okay. Uh, to the funding. Um, so that has already um, been approved, uh, item four. Uh, in the Ross Chinese Gardens, the uh, consent has been uh, completed. And that work is underway. Cool, thank you for the update. Um, just on the Heritage Subcommittee, I'm just wondering, because it's almost probably timely to, it'll be the, for the new council to decide the committee structure anyway, for the, or, or lack of, for the new trainium and, Probably you're thinking about that trust board. 
however ends up being the chair of that chair of Heritage Hokitika and the chair of the industrial park would be three people you'd want around a committee that was discussing those co connected issues, I would have thought. You've got to bear in mind, it's not for the dissenters. No, I'm just aware of what was on that list. You'd have to, you, you yeah. could have a, you could have a huge thing and maybe. That's the challenge. Well, maybe tying in, because Heritage West Coast does the, that symposium or that forum every year, mm -hmm. which we're invited to, but only, you know, only a few of us attend. But it's the same thing. There's probably merit in actually having a, you know, six monthly, we hear from this group, this group, this group, and then the no, next six months. I'm making probably um, a strategy document that can be pulled together across all those organisations. But obviously, only have this one, sort of an asset management plan, and an amp that goes across all four, four or five from there. Um, much but the one thing that we could be some of, and like I say, we do have representation from other groups. And as has been discussed earlier in terms of the great presentation we had earlier, you're talking about the same people with the same age group who are spreading themselves under similar groups. They've only got limited time as it is. And whilst, to say it out loud, in terms of the chair of each of these, they then generally want to focus on what their prime interest is as well. And that's the fear in terms of forming a subcommittee, another committee for the sake of the committee. So what is it that we're actually trying to achieve and how do we work better with the committees and the different organisations that are working and collectively, including how do we support each other around funding so that we're not competing for funding that's available. So it's about doing it in a strategic manner. Yeah, when we first approached it, there was a different reason at the time. Uh, yeah. But when we think about what's coming up, 2023, 2024, in terms of things to celebrate as well, how do we work with the make that work for the whole, not just this thing, but the East Coast, um, as we need to help them. But there are other things happening in the background, um, but not for consumption at this point. And the other thing was that Heritage 2023 year, and that's being led by, as I understand, Destination Hokitika. So no. Sam. No. Okay. Oh, yes, correct, through, through Dave Richard, yes, yes, correct, sorry. So have we got, have we got an interest in that as council or this committee? Not as council, but in terms of assistance that we're able to provide to mm -hmm. people that do the museum and the community Stuff. connects and that sort of thing in the community we have. Because it's pretty, well, it's a pretty big year, isn't it, for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And it's just recognising where things lie because once again, there's certain groups that want to promote certain aspects, and that's not to have another group come over and take away what they're trying to achieve mm. and highlight themselves as well. So it's just working in a collaborative approach and make sure it gets off the starting block. The, um, the other thing is, we've tried to get some funding, so we made a joint commitment or application to be built on this coast for a project manager role to take the lead on that. And that was the Natasha's just joined us. Yeah. Cool. Didn't I just say no? Yeah, all good. Any questions, committee? No. Not all. I think um going through that action list, that heritage committee, I think, is closed. I don't know what you guys think. The signage matters closed because it's up to council now tomorrow there's nothing more we can do on that tiff's closed in the chinese garden matter's not closed but in terms of this committee's involvement in the matter it's yeah okay we won't so basically all of those action items are closed if that's all right right and someone to move that we receive the report. Councillor Davidson and seconded by. <laughs> Councillor Cogan, and that we remove those items is completed. Happy with that? Yep. yep. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Those against? The resolution's carried. Thank you. We have no presentations, but we had one prior to the meeting, Jane, which was this document just for 10 minutes. Yeah, we just spoke to it and some other people from the park. Um, and we'll welcome Natasha Morris, the manager of the um, Western District Library, to speak to the library update report.
Oh, I'm in the sea. <laughs> it's like a fish swimming. Sorry, Natasha. That's okay. Um, I'm at home. I think Tiara was going to speak to the report, but I can do it if you want. Okay, okay. that's great. Can I just, before we carry on then, just so I'm clear, um, you speak to the library. I will for the yep. museum. And um, Carolina oh, for the right. museum. Oh, you will, oh, okay, we'll hand to you for everything. Yeah. Put a hand to tea out of heart. Cool. Good evening, everyone. Um, obviously, you've got the library manager's report before you. We will take the report as read. Um, there are some key items here of interest, however, that you may want some further delving into. I think the main thing to highlight in the report, however, is in terms of our response during the COVID uh, process and the fact that we have returned to normal opening hours for the library. Uh, but it's interesting to note that despite having the normal opening hours, there's still a quadrant of our public, particularly the elder uh, generation, who still have fear of coming into an environment where people may not be wearing masks or may not be vaccinated. So we're respecting that and making sure that we still have things in place so they can still access, access the services that they wish to and um, working around that. But if there are any other questions for Natasha, please. I guess on the, the, um, the things that we put in place over COVID, so would they continue on and on and on regardless of COVID? Because they actually be still for people who are at this stage, yes, we are, and whether that carries on for six months or longer, but it's just recognising that there are different ways to deliver service. Yeah. Uh, because even before COVID, there are certain people who are part of our membership who don't have the ability to actually physically get into the library by location, by mobility, or other things that might restrict them. So those things have been there. It's just it tends to be an update more in the number of people using it, which is it's great. Cool. Any other questions? Right. Thanks, Natasha, and thanks, Tiaroha. Um, Councillor Neil have to move that we receive the report and seconded by Councillor Davidson. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Um, Tiaroha for the Hokutuka Museum Current Projects Update. Uh, thank you once again, members. So before you is the report from the museum director. Once again, we will take it as read. It is focused on museum activities in terms of day-to-day -day operational issues. And if you have any questions, we have Carolina here to answer them to you. You're welcome to, you'd be both of you are actually welcome to come up and sit closer if you like, if you feel comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> questions, questions for the museum. I'm just, I'm just a question is, how's it all going? It's going, it's going actually quite well, considering all the delays that we've had with getting things. Um, and the other thing that's going really well is that we're finally online in a significant way. So we're actually finding a lot of our inquiries come through on the website. Mm. Means people don't have to wait until we open to send an inquiry to the yeah. no, that's good. No, no great, great issues at all. Fishing. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, 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 not not at all. I just, you know, I just wanted to know if there was any uh, anything that was uh, really uh, any huge risk out there at all. Well, which um, part that I reported on? Oh, just, overall. Uh, just overall, just. Yeah, well, tell me what you mean by. Oh this. no, God, any any uh, any problems, any any foreseeable problems that you know. Um. Well, well probably not one. Okay. Uh, in terms of risk, and it's one that we have raised before. Uh, in terms of this committee having oversight, but really one for the council going forward to hold whether it's in the next few months or early next year, but it's just continuously keeping in poor of mind the state of the government building. Uh, it is getting worse. We have collections that are at significant risk in terms of the need for either significant expenditure to rework stop the leaks mm -hmm. getting in. Uh, and we had hoped not 
or they actually hit me for this meeting that we might have done an actual um, site visit using certain scaffolding that's in place where you can actually get a view of what that roof looks like because it is critical. Uh, at least 60% of it's compromised, and that is not an easy, cheap replacement. So it really is potentially about bringing certain things forward as to what we do with the collection, and that's whether it stays on site or we find somewhere else or we're building another premises for that as well. So that really is a risk of priority, which is in our eyesight now. Having had the police together against the ground floor, that's been great in terms of trying to protect items either. The general risk that we've been having to deal with is a sense of staff. So, um, to say that the new for this meeting is probably not. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and in terms of mitigation, we can do everything that we can to mitigate them. So, for example, at the moment we have covered a large section of the collection with a, um, we were essentially like a New Zealand quality cut, just to prevent any sort of, you know. <laughs> no, that, that, that's fine. I mean, so the, the, uh, the upgrade from the outside. That, that looks really good, mm -hmm. and it, that, that's you know really exciting. So um, yeah. Oh, so um, hopefully, the council meeting. Um, I'm ask, asking my contractors to provide me with a uh, whole lot of photos that I can present to council without having to go there in terms of all the upgrades that actually happened internally and externally. So just a collage of photos that can actually show you exactly what's gone on. In terms of the structures, which you won't see once it's all the steelwork is reasonably considerable. And come an earthquake, you want to be inside the Carnegie building <laughs> um, because it's going to hold up forever and a day. That's nice. Thank you. The exhibition is proposed. When will that come before the I know we've had a presentation on it, but when the council took the chance to discuss it. What part are you talking about? Um, oh, I can show you. Have you seen? Would it be helpful to see steps? Although I haven't recorded on it. But do I discuss this now since it hasn't been recorded on? And... No, I have another report to bring back. So I don't want to. Okay. So we'll get this one. Just discussing. Oh, I think it's qualifying because as I said before, we have had presentations to council and in terms of the actual expertise themselves or detail of that, it comes down from funding um, and what's available and how that stays. So if we can get the golden egg version of funding and that can be locked in, then there'll be a certain quality of ex exhibition in each space. But if the funding is not there because everybody is fighting for the same piece of funding and it's bringing back to what's affordable for the district. But the priority right now for us is we can't do much more until the actual carnival itself is complete um, to enable us to then sit down and say, right, now we've got this. And as I just alluded to with this before, that may be that the risk for some of all actually takes priority in how we want to set collection of staff and protect that and have that for safe environment prior to then dedicating staff time to actually doing the exhibition um, or doing both collectively and the external people at site. Without jumping in again, so that wants to do that and get in trouble. <laughs> um, what I'm going to quickly show you, just because I think this helps with clarity. So, this was, uh, I think everyone knew about the webinar. So, we've got a series of webinars, public webinars, and meetings. So, this is one slide from that. But just to help in terms of understanding the processes for exhibitions, now this isn't just unique to the museum, this is for how you do exhibitions in a museum and gallery. This is pretty stock standard. So what you have seen has represented both one and two in terms of those preconceptual illustrations here. What, what we are up to is what we are up to is three. So that's where we got the financial feasibility studies paid for by National Services to Kaidangu. So from there, that's what Tauraha was saying, that's when you know in terms of the cost, where to go for how to source extra funding, you know you don't know you're going to need it. And before you even get into probably what you're talking about for, I'm assuming, um, sorry, sorry, is you'll probably get to what I would say in terms of interpretation. So I'm looking it upside down. Just look at me. 
That's when you get up to number 10 for what you're asking for. Number 10. But in terms of the, you know, all the components that can feed into it, you're looking at one, two, three, four, five, five steps before you can get to that interpretation, which I assume is the part that you're talking about. So in terms of the museum, we are here, and that's what we've been funded to do, to do so far. So through the chair, what, what I mean is we've had, to date we've had slideshow presentation of the three concepts that you call them. Yeah, one and one and two. Yeah, yeah. That's all we have had. We haven't had a discussion around the table with council. We do have this, this staff, and that was council. We haven't had the discussion as to do we agree with that. Is that is that the, the direction we want the museum to go? We haven't had that discussion. And at this stage, because we're going through the feasibility study, I don't that's... want it to get. Well, sorry, through, through, the, the, through the through the chair, I, I don't want it to get to the point of. Past the point of no return because we've gone this far and we've got the funding and we're, we're committed and locked into a certain path that we haven't actually talked about. And that's the critical element of the feasibility study, mm -hmm. which is yeah. the initial asset to do that. Yes. The reporting mm -hmm. back. So it's about bringing that information then back to the feasibility study in terms of these are the concepts that are being proposed, this is what the cost looks like, what is level of council with part one, part two, part three, part four. Um, or if we're not happy with any of those, then back to the drawing board and then what exactly is, is council com comfortable with. So at this stage, we haven't locked into anything with expense. That's why it was really critical for us to attend that Dragon's Den session for the three days, which will be interesting around as well as Industrial Heritage Park, that enabled us to get the funding to do this because it went to this mm. 20,000 that we didn't have to pay from rate payers. It's enabled us to bring in experts in this field, which means it's an independent report coming back the council looking at the collections we have. So they were down here the first week of May. We spent the better part of three and a half, four days here going through that. They know what we have. They can look at what that might look like in the space that we have as well and what this way to present those. So basically September when they come back to the report, it will be coming back to council and then saying what's your level of comfort of that feasibility study and then how you want to do it for us all in the living plan with the that. It's also worth to note, so when you're going through these steps, all of you can do project management for each other. What you do have is this parcel with the side of it, so that's your design services, the interpretation, and creation services. So that includes all the research. So all the, in terms of the content, that's over here, but you can't really get there until you at least you go past number three and continue through to stage 10. So I just want to make it very clear, like maybe it's like jumping the gun is what I'm trying to say. Um, but it's best if you follow the process of the independent context of the big point of feasibility study. I wonder if there's um through following that, hearing what Paul said, I wonder if the similar presentation that was done at the webinar. And the similar presentation that was done to the, you know, some of the interest groups that's been done could be done and talked through with council as a, I know we had the pre, we had the, you know, the pre-concept, but they're probably a bit more, they've probably gone a bit deeper than maybe we went in that initial um, workshop. I would say the workshop that I did with the council did a lot of things. I was quite aware I didn't want to go to the public without consulting with the council as you say. So what the public has heard is what they heard plus the website and the additional just the basic project management exhibition. So you can find these online for any museum studies. So okay, but so uh, through 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 the chair, the the um the concept plans that were Put to us then for the webinar. The pre concept. Pre concept. Yeah. Who came up with those? They were put out by the museum team and yeah. was closed as well. Yeah. And so that's the point is that that's what's been put to the public now. And so the public now thinks that's the proposal. It's been made very clear that they draft. 
and that they are there for feedback and discussion until we can sort of get that number three. Mm -hmm. But it was also the webinars are also the promo on our website. It's really important for us to talk about our website and our social media channels. So the webinar was a majority of an overview of what's happening here at Tim. As I said at the council meeting, the, um, what happens with the New Zealand exhibition, in my view, must reflect our collective history. Hundred percent. Hundred percent part of the process. And yeah. and for that, it needs to be a far wider net cast as to the input for them. Um, and the councils need to see the direction for that. In terms of setting the direction, it's the overview for what type of people or service council expect from the museum. In terms of what might end up happening with the space and cells, it's about how well we can utilize the things we have. But we're not looking at the museum in isolation either. So if we use loss, for example, uh, we're having close discussions with them because what we don't want to do, and it's a bit like if I even break back to the point on the pathway discussions we've been having for last, well, prior to COVID, we were able to actually meet, was making sure that what was going to be reflected on Buddha didn't compete and the complete the book figures and the complete the half, so that the story became a continuous flow and spread as against the same thing. Otherwise, why would people then do the, the trail through and things like pathway? But we're also making sure with other um, facilities that are like minded that we're having that discussion. So, Ross is great with telling the whole story, how much of that would be then really reflect within what the figure, and Ross is also competing for funding to expand their premises. And provide a better story for people with loss. So we would have a taster as an example in Bokatika on the Bokatika and surround elements that potentially would loss take the lead in terms of what the old mining means for the larger western. So that's part of all the discussions with stakeholder groups as well. And it's the same in terms of what we're discussing around forestry. No one could see all the benefits of old big machines. Do we really want to replicate that in a great way in terms of the museum as against another taste and for more information? Hey, here are you get up to the industrial heritage part. So it's all about these tentacles, or if we, well, this is about the effect, it's about having it out there and having to make sure everybody is benefiting from the story rather than trying to talk to the people. Because all we end up doing is putting other organisations on that language. Oh, so, yeah. so, so, yeah. so, the feasibility side of that. So could we um just a step before like um so we, like this document would have been um would have been developed um closely they wouldn't have just said you know like go ahead do the document and then come back with the final I wonder if they're after three you know uh, uh, step three your step three is um a discussion with councillors these are the themes oh, this yes. is what's yes. come back yes. and that's before yeah. and that's before September right that's well before the completion of the feasibility, that would be these are the these are the themes, these are the ideas. This like that hub and spoke approach. That's the first we've talked about, you know, like as a group, just so we uh, understand the journey. Because we, I can see very clearly, you guys understand the journey. You know what you're doing, but probably hasn't filtered to us. And some of us feel like we probably haven't had the, an input into that. That's what I'm sensing. So. I'm just wondering, is there another? Yeah. Um, I think one of the issues that we had, and pull the COVID card again, but it's one of those things that in terms of where is the most important place for this information to be put forward? Is it before council, or is it before this committee, or an equivalent of? Because that's what's happening. Things are getting pulled down, or we're having reports to this committee, reports to another committee, and then. Something's been with in January at council, and I'm quite no, we've done this, and we've done that, but we haven't come to full council. So it's probably as we move forward for this, we then say, you know, when it comes to the um, museum at Carnegie, there at Drummond, actually that's not something that falls to the community development committee, we can see authority for that, it needs to be full council, so that full council is informed, because we have neither the resource of time to try and see. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want it feeding two committees or whatever. I just yeah. think if we could get, I know we've got a jam-packed calendar, but if we could get a workshop around 
museum. Mm -hmm. Anything to do with significant funding needs to go back to the council rather than the full yeah, subcommittees. Yeah, the full council, the full council, the full council is, where the, is where the presentation was on the, mm -hmm. the, the pre-concepts. So if we, that discussion needs to go back to the full council. I agree with the um, the concept of you know, hub and spoke, and that, you know, it's um, too well well canvassed with on the pathway and, and leading up to that. Um, and, um, and also we talked about this before the the pathway was even born. We talked about this in the concept of the future of the Oakland Museum and. Um, a number of us got around the table <clears throat> but, um, and, um, and mapped out a whole um, idea of a, Panama, a national Panama centre um, based around the museum, but also with, with all of the other elements of the, of the museum in it. And um, so that work was, was done and, and um, there were an, um, a lot of um, of heritage interests that were were involved in that over a number of months, and um, I, I don't want to say that lost as well, um, but it's kind of somewhere out in the ether now. Um, but that was back when David Stapleton was amongst the longest group. Is there always part of our application for Fiji if we were called for a brand new museum? And it was, it was, no, no, that's yes. right. That's right. Um, however, the the concepts within that were sound. Um, and so what I'm saying, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We just um, received the funding. <coughs> the process that you're talking about. No, 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 okay. no, but we did but we we did tease out um, concepts and um, you know, how how um, how we wanted to tell our histories at the museum and feed that out to um, to uh, other stories such as the aviation, such as Stan Graham, such as you know, all, all the um, environmental um, mm. battles, all of that were, were um, had, yeah, had been well teased out. Mm. It was um, so. Yeah, I, I, I'm just. Uh, yeah, I just do want to make sure that the, that the museum is the number one destination. Mm. Heritage. Now, one of the things that we recognise, and we don't feel it's lost, it's just that it's been the most recent by ages to close, is the Hukupika Museum of the Mount Pass Regional Museum for the West Coast, mm -hmm. because it was the it's only really museum for the West Coast, and we intend to keep that mantle there. It's just we need to wake up the baby, feed the baby, throw the baby, and then expose the baby to the public. But beyond that, what we also don't want to do is get tied up in consultation. Therefore, that's what everybody talks about consultation. And when we consult, we hear the complaints. What we want to revitalize is the engagement. What's the engagement that happened in the past as well, which we'll touch on. So, how do we re engage those who have already had discussions that know what would work, what doesn't work, who are the key people, where are some things that are fighting in the system that haven't actually ended up in the museum or here at the industrial park? So our focus would be more on the engagement and the rekindling of fires that's really dwindled over the last three years for a lot of reasons, but so it's been a lot as well. And that's what we're saying too about rather than we're talking really in terms of the heritage cultural subcommittees, how do we actually work with groups that we're working for to keep the same end goal? And that is critical. But it's engagement that makes it happen, not competition. And I think we should be the biggest champions of that. And I think a similar thing kind of played out a bit with Heritage Pataka. It was like, um, you know, like it was in the paper, views expressed, have the workshop, have the session with them, you know, maybe some different views as a result of that. As councillors, we should be able to articulate what you've said if we agree, you know, if that's what we want to do. And, and people that say they want to have a say about using this is the process, right? At the moment, I think it's all about we're a bit unsure. An easy step, I think, would just to be bring us all up to speed, allow the councillors to have their input, those that want to, and then we can be saying, you know, this is actually the journey of the museum. It's on this timeline. This is your, you know, your window to have an a say is this, and we go forward. I, I mean, I just think that would address what Paul's saying, you know, in terms of councillors having an input around. 
Absolutely. One sec. And, yeah, but they, they and didn't could put sit them, in that same place. Yeah, they didn't put them direction needs to be at, a, at an early enough stage. It hasn't gone, as I said before, past the point of minute return, where it becomes too difficult to unpick it all. I don't want to get into that position. I want to, to, like to, give the, to give the museum a clearer, a clearer steer mm. um, in the earlier stage. And so I'll um, work alongside the cover line up. Um, we'll look at what's happening in terms of other projects, but obviously there's a lot on the yeah. museum. Yeah. And see if not July, we can look at something in terms of the work around the proposal, if not July and August. Yeah. What I would request though is that any members that are members in terms of this committee and the council who have been involved either in the past projects, if there's documentation from that that is still about and circulating and sharing that, or at least bringing the, the names of people that were key, um, key involved parties at the time, too, because it also helps going forward. As against once again, we get somebody on the council, but then someone else popped up and if we do, um, we've got example for that, someone like that was 20 years ago, she yeah, yeah. asked us, here's the plans, here's the record, if you didn't really have to go and get more specific um, so let's try and avoid those sorts of names for the fans. Because a lot of people are out there with great ideas for investment that in the last few years. Are you able to identify the, I know they were declined, but the um, yeah, explanation? Right. Yeah. Are you able to identify that in the explanation? Yeah. It was no explanation, <laughs> really. Everything we put forward, we did not. The challenge with that application, um, it was um, obviously came from Western District Council, but the funds had to have regional support. Um, and there was, I suppose, we were quite quick off the mark in terms of that application and didn't have regional support. So, um, hence the, the birth of Konami Parkway out of all of that. I think um, hearing what you were saying earlier, Te Aroha, probably is an issue that I see as, as urgent as Drummond Hall, mm. as Carnegie. Is Pakiwata is here is archives generally, and uh, to me that's actually quite an important discussion and one we should be having sooner rather than later because it's actually got implications in the annual plan and all sorts of things. If we're thinking about hearing about archive store here, hearing about drum and hall, this that and the next, hearing about Pakiwata, we kind of need to look at all of those together and go, where do our archives actually need to be? And can we do a fit for purpose fit out of something we've currently got? Or is there a sense in streamlining some of those activities? Because I, I hate hearing things like we're patching roofs with tarpaulins and you know, but it can get quite emotive, right? So if we look at it factually, that thing, something like that's going to cost a lot of money. But we need to know what we're working to, because at the moment, in my head, we're restoring, strengthening and fitting out Carnegie. Yeah. One Carnegie building does not a museum make, in my opinion. We've got all the archives, mm. which we haven't even, as council, really even discussed. All the rest, yeah. of, the, all the rest of the collection. Is that, exactly, yeah. Um, and, and there's an awesome collection that sits like that. Yeah, and, and, you know, I'd like to know what other plans is to bring that to things to light. It's also part of the collection sitting up here as well. And then there's parts of the collection down there, which we would say because the size and relevance really should be here. And there's part of the collection here that they've been around and do the same thing because of what the urban part should be displayed should be down there. So there's all those conversation pieces. But about having the right people in the room to do that, which is some of the people here, and it's the same in terms of it's in Ross, other communities, and then people who are just holding on to things because they know that no other part. Or the museum for Ross actually have room or can guarantee store it in a manner that it's a bit more to be. Yeah, through the chair, I mean, it's like we need we need clarity on the linkage with uh, Konami um, Heritage here, the museum, and also the information centre. You know, we talked about you know the linkage, but getting clarity. On that linkage is very important. In terms of through the chair, in terms of the um, the archive, yeah. <clears throat> Again, I mean, we've been spinning wheels on this one for years because the discussion 
Ele tem é um decade atrás, 20 anos, um, and what up until know, maybe five years ago, had been um, working in the shanty town with the, the, the idea of a regional library because of affordability. And, um, and my understanding is, I, I don't know, I'd like to, I'd like to, to um, find out where that shanty town proposal has ended up. But I, my understanding was that they are confident of proceeding with, with something that, that, um, of the regional archive, which has to be temperature controlled and all of those important things that, that we want. And we can't possibly provide in the government hall. Mm. Um, and even with a new group. Um, you know, <laughs> I know, uh, I know. And you've got the problem with the, the sea low line and um, potential floods and all it goes. Um, not to mention the earthquake lift in, in the next decent shape. And the walls tumble in. Um, but the archive, um, yeah, I mean, this has all been traversed. Um, I can actually talk about that slightly. Um, what I was looking at is that you talked about uh, Liz um, from Grey District Council, as well as Andrea from Shanty Town. Now, the thing is with that site is that, so you've had Turnbull and Archive go through. It has its own issues at this site. Um, we are, so all the institutions in Heritage West Coast, we are obviously all work together, which is the thing. Um, and that seems more of a discussion with Grey District Council and Shanty Town. Mm. It doesn't actually, it, looking at the plan so far, it wouldn't cover our collection. I don't think it really would even be able to take hold on our tribal collection. But those are the last things I looked at. So you may want to talk, this committee may want to talk to Grey, Grey District as Liz and Andrew to see where that's at. So the last time I've had a discussion about that inquiring about this, so obviously we don't want to take something that was already, already been existing. It wasn't yeah. able to, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. but it had a capacity to yeah. ask as well. Jeff Good, and of course the one that wrote that um, she was commissioned mm -hmm. to, to um, coordinate with all the Puma Councils and the Heritage Group, um, and she wrote the plan and put in the you know, she wrote the, the funding application, etc. That's why I'm saying she would talk to Andrew at Shanty Town and Liz at Grey District Council. Which ones have changed? Yeah. So there's obviously a few layers to this onion, um, which we don't. I don't think we're going to sort tonight, but it would be great to have a workshop on. Uh, the CAPEX stuff to me is quite critical. It's almost like a tomorrow discussion for some of that if it's got funding. Mm -hmm. Well, if the drip, if the holes fall, if the roof's falling off. Excuse me, I'm to the chair. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm just interested as well, because I mean, a lot of the focus at the moment has been also on the Carnegie building and getting that all kind of shut. So surely conversations have been held along the night line knowing that Drummond Hall was actually becoming further in disrespect, disrepair. Has that just been a conversation that's just become a conversation and then just sort of put off to the side because no, we're clearly at a situation now where, you know, it's leaking considerably. Yeah, so in terms of the 10-year plan that was adopted, um, it is in the already spending in terms of the new archives built. The issue is, where should that be based on, because originally there were plans for it to actually go right next door to Carnegie, between Carnegie and the fire station apartments. But there are other things already established there, um, or is it a case of simply relocating the group that we have here? We've got the, the um, drum and ball in the course of that Carnegie six foot people that's all affiliation with that complex as it was and they can't be crossed by those quicker. Um, or is it future gazing too in terms of taking them to the place to discover and then other little aware of just the flooding risk to stay down on the place to us in terms of the particular film C V D and then there's the earthquake potential. So is it finding another site potentially 
up around here and through the park, what you call it, and we yeah, and then having that, um, what we built in Burmese, you can solve pathway still there. So there is money under budget already. It's about coming back to council and saying, what is your level of comfort and of the three percent proposals, which do you prefer most? And that's not a discussion for today because we've got a number of discussions which have been before council and then when the process come out, there's been changes which will impact on other projects and this is one we don't want to get impacted on once the decision is made. So the, the funding that's been put aside for it, surely that funding allocation will restrict the choices anyhow of what we can actually do and where that can go because we're not talking about or are we talking about there's a funding allocation there and then we will apply for external funding to pay, pay the difference? Yes, yeah. and you had a report, if you remember, there's a report about the customary. We have got project funding for projects with the customary that different to the services in Drummond. Um, so if you go back to that, you can, that's, what you, that's pretty much it in terms of customary. So it's a feasibility study again where we got funding for some initial stock and heritage to do. So that covers that, but it, I also covered in the recent report in terms of the collection readiness. So a large chunk of those services in Drummond are all to do with the collection. So it really should be collection led, whatever the requirements are for that collection as a whole. So um, the best thing I can say is that it would probably require for you to have a look at your reports and tell me what is it? What are your questions around the collection readiness project and that customer project? Um, and maybe come back to the next meeting and then we can discuss it further. But it's pretty much it's at the point of a feasibility study for the customer project as well as collection readiness and drum and board. So, um, that's it. Basically, come back to council for decision making. Yeah. I should point out that when we started up here, um, we actually put quite a bit of energy uh, then statement myself and the proposing to council that they consider sponsoring a, a national life or a West Coast life because of the huge amount of uh, lands and surveys and forestry mm -hmm. records that were in containers and in the old building uh, of Charlie Douglas collection, which is now disappeared and mm -hmm. mapping, which is in containers up in Green Mountain. Mm -hmm. So uh, it gathered a bit of speed for a while on the proposal to put it across the road here. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was just purely about gathering finance. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of support at that time for the project if it was up there because it met a lot of the criteria. Mm -hmm. But the crop died a natural death. Well, I think it needs to be revived, <laughs> get the defibrillator out because we've got some things. You know, this is when you see that uh, the government puts on two million into the old government. <laughs> you Thank you. I, so, those questions, I think, are uh, with the intent of us growing and understanding of, the, of where everything's at. And I think the action there is to schedule mm. a workshop if we can to address those two components that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, I've got another one about Drummond. I think it'd be really well worth it. I think we, and that's not full council, it'd be really well worth it if you come into the museum and I can show you if you can make some sense and you can see it. Yeah, sure. And we can invite the full council anyway. They may choose not to come, but oh, there's only three that's other councillors. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what I mean. There's only three other councillors. Yeah. I think we, we did a tour with when the first, this council yeah. actually um, came together. Yeah. yeah. We're in town, 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 and, and I, I think, um, can I just clarify though, because the archives thing is in the budget, but I think it's in year three, four, wasn't it? Uh, or year, year three, 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 so next yeah. year, yeah. So it is, in, it is actually in the <laughs> plan. 
depends on what options come out of the feasible for living study in terms of the, the value. So the value is a, in 1.2 mil. Originally it was in for this year, but because of this meeting that was requested for budgets, it got pushed out until next year. Otherwise, you should have a point. Well, I, I honestly think those all those issues are so interconnected. We, if we are workshopping tomorrow, I think those things need to come up because leaving yeah, it till yeah. say June, July next year to decide, I think, is not going to so the, be helpful. To, to the um, we have this better off funding workshop on the 21st as well. So there's an opportunity to look at that funding and how to allocate this money in this class. Well, in terms of this one, it's at Well, that's that's what I mean. I think I think if the archives budgets and and we know strategically if we can get some buy-in, it's so generally we you know is it is it preferred for it to be in the CBD? Is it preferred for it to be elevated? Then you're getting a bit of a steer to take that project forward. Definitely, right? if you're applying for funding, it has a stake as part of that decision, particularly around you know um, it has a risk analysis. So up up here or in a higher ground, but in your, your business case, well, you've potentially got cross pollination with doing something up here too. If you're looking at that. We all so are, that's what I mean. Everything's all connected. So we can't just. Like there is a feasibility study underway now. So yeah, yeah. No, I, I get that. Rather than reworking it individually, that can come back and do the work for it. And then, then you go from there. Yeah. You can also go to the Royal Regency. Yeah, and the EOC as well. Yes, yeah, yeah, so that's so what I mean. I mean that all. Well. Yeah. You said that a creative accountant of John Olson used to do. Bridge 352 down. Yeah, the area. And build a fox moth. Yeah. Well, it depends on where the money came from, matter what. Hey, um, but no, thank you for the report. I think there's a lot of interest in that, and mm -hmm. and we we'll, we will take those two matters forward. And think and the recommendation is that we receive the update from the museum director, and that we schedule a workshop. That a workshop be scheduled. Someone will be. Yeah. Yep, sure. One two, that, two, uh, two workshops, one on the capital, one on the one fit out of Carnegie. Councillor Davidson. Two workshops. The deep dive. I'm going. Yep. And uh, Councillor Neil. Yeah. All those in favour? Mm -hmm. right. Cool. Thank you. And we'll welcome Sarah Brown through TC to speak to the community development Hello. update report. Thank you, Chair. So once again, we will take the report as read. As you can see within the report, there are a lot of funding grants that have been completed and we're going through the accountability process. There are funding rounds. We're currently on train and there are funding rounds coming up. Mm. So if you have any questions other than Mayor's past jobs, um, because we're still waiting for formal um, notifications of what's happening with funding at that time. Mm. Welcome, Sarah. Any questions on funding? Community development projects, creative community schemes, rural transport, it's all in the report. No? No. The um, one that we talked about at council a while back was one of the projects that got creative community scheme funding, which was the hook to beach sign, making sure that that tied in with the interlocking. Yeah, I think that I call it interlocking. That, you know, really using the resources that are there at the time um, it may be quite difficult because they're not they're there, they're there to install rock walls. They're not there to install. So I think there's a conversation to be had with the stakeholder first, which we haven't done. Yeah, cool. to make sure and that's, that I don't know the answer, but I just knew that yeah. it doesn't make sense to build it. And then the next week, the rock wall gets topped up and they have to rip it all out. You know what I mean? I think that would be the rock wall first. Mm -hmm. and then the other part of that side is um, we've got to soften what goes in there to make sure it actually aesthetically um, uh, is there to keep the waves away and provide permanent access. Um, so uh, it will be a significant structure, so we've got to make sure that you soften the landscape. Yeah. Well, they're talking slightly deviating, but just it's around the same thing. 
my understanding of the seawall extension is that they're actually heaping sand up and like the new seawall will actually be 80 percent covered in sand yeah, that's the new design that's the new design right so does that have any bearing on nothing to do with no no but is that the same sort of thinking if you're talking about the interlocking cube needing to be oh, i think that'll softer. happen naturally naturally with the, with, oh, yeah. as time there's this the barrier or the um, infrastructure will, will get sand covering two thirds of it and we could park so we can go in and part of the rock wall moved last night yeah. Well, that, uh, the, um, but in thinking about that because it's, it's got yeah, quite a lot of um national recognition that sign right so it'll be the if that project's done I think in the intent that the com committee suggested where it can leverage business donations and all sorts of other things because people would get in behind a project like beach sign. I don't know what role council actually plays as council proper. Obviously, Sarah is doing all the administrative work with the grant, but like, do we, well, is well, there I anything think, else I we can we, provide? Or? I suggest we take an action that we engage with this. With the, uh, with the originator of the sign yeah. to confirm their aspirations for it. Because I think it came up at um, council too, at the council meeting about a permanent. So it was sort of weird that those two yeah. things were happening at the same time. Council was saying we want a permanent beach sign and then the funding came forward. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really appreciate the work that's happening in that space. So, have we got any um, other questions for Sarah? Thank you. Thanks for your report. And someone to move that the current projects that they report from the Community Development Advisor be received. Yep. Councillor Neil and seconded. Davidson, all those in favour? Aye. Thank you. And um, is there anything else to discuss? What's for tea? Mm -hmm. wow. You say, yeah. Councillor Davidson. What's for tea? Oh, no, I just, I was just going to say that the uh, the ladies uh, they got well coordinated. Uh, yeah, really, really good. Eh? And love, love the cut. Yeah.